this is Jennifer and I just wanted to do another book review for you. So this time I read this book, Aggie Morton, Mystery Queen. And this is a series, the first one in the series. And this one is called The Body Under the Piano. And at the very top, you see that it's inspired by the real life queen of crime, Agatha Christie. I want to read the first uh, paragraph to you just because it's super good. And um, I loved it. Like once you read this paragraph, you just have to read on. So um, I will tell first about making a new friend and save the dead body for later. This follows the traditional rules of storytelling. Lull this reader with pleasant scenery and lively dialogue. Introduce a few appealing characters and then, aha, discover a corpse. So if that doesn't get you to want to read this book, I don't know what will. So this is a middle grade. The lead character is 12 years old and it's a mystery, clearly. Um, and it's about a girl. She lives in Victorian England, turn of the century. Her father has passed away. She's being raised by a mom, very traditional Victorian views. And she happens upon a dead body at the dance studio where she takes classes. And so then the rest of the story becomes her and some of her friends helping trying to solve this murder. It's very personal because it happened in a place that she she knows. It is, happens to people that she knows. Um, and so they have got to solve the crime and you know, the police are trying to solve the crime, but they don't have all the information. And if it's not for these kids, then the story does not get solved. Um, as I'm reading this book, it makes me think a lot of a Pixar movie in the sense that, you know, when you go see a Pixar movie, those are really designed for children. But if you're not an adult with a pretty vast background of knowledge, you don't get all the things like the kids don't get all the Easter eggs and student kids don't get all the, the little inside jokes. But as an adult, you get them if, in fact, you have all the information. And so that's really what this book made me think of, because here I am reading it. I know that it is related to Agatha Christie. And in the end, the author's note is really helpful for explaining how the author came to write the story and piecing those things together. But as I'm reading it, I'm thinking, okay, I look at my kids, they're middle grade kids, third through fifth grade. Who's going to know what a pantaloon is and why she would be embarrassed if, that somebody saw her pantaloons? Um, you know, the fact that women could not be in certain jobs and only men could be in certain jobs and why that was just the way it was at that time. So those kinds of little Easter eggs could be teachable moments, but it also could make a little bit confusing for kids as they read this book. I think this is a great story for probably fifth grade, some upper fourth grade readers, because there is some complicated language in it. Um, for instance, if you know Agatha Christie, you know she has some famous characters, one of them being Perot, right? And so he shows up in this story as Hector Perot instead of Poirot, who is in her, her books. Um, and he is a foreigner to England, and so he speaks with a little different pattern. Um, so those things might throw off a reader who's challenged and struggling with reading, um, because this book has so many little Easter eggs that only Agatha Christie fans would get. I do hope you try it. This is the beginning. Like I said, there's a second book already out. Um, and so I'm not sure how many books will be in the series, but it will still follow Aggie Morton, who is the young version of Agatha Christie, as she discovers uh, mysteries and solves them in her little town in England. All right. Happy reading. Have a great day.